We're back again with more Godzilla films. This time we're talking about the Millennium Era, which is the third major era of Godzilla. Unlike Showa and Heisei, this one doesn't follow one solid continuity. And essentially each film does its own thing. So, the first film is Godzilla 2000. Basically, Godzilla is back in town after about 40 years of being absent, and he has a new design, and he comes to town, he starts terrorizing shit, then he fights Orga. So Godzilla 2000 Millennium. Uh, the new Godzilla design, pretty cool. Um, Orga isn't too bad. The movie has some janky special effects. Very janky. There's the, uh, the CGI. All the stuff with the UFO looks rough. And <laughs> there's some some weird plagiaristic Independence Day shots when it lands on the tower and blows it up and stuff. Um, the human plot completely lost on me. It's some guy just running around a building downloading data. Well, he has his daughter and his girlfriend, wife, his reporter, and girlfriend. Godzilla's a fucking asshole in 2000. And he just kind of like fucks shit up for no reason. Like, he fights off Orga. And then there's like 10 more minutes in the movie where he just like walks around blowing up random buildings for no reason. And the conclusion is the scientist guy yells at Godzilla and then Godzilla punches him off the building. Yes. And then the guy says. I guess there's a little Godzilla in all of us, and Godzilla walks into the distance while just smashing buildings and being a general asshole. Um, it's a little odd. Godzilla 2000, um, it's fine. The Orga fight's kinda cool. Human plot's very bullshit. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yep. So what do you think of Godzilla 2000 Millennium? I honestly thought it was kind of bad. I liked the new Godzilla design. I'm glad they only used it for a couple of films because I find it to be a cool design, but it's very of its time. Uh, it definitely doesn't really... I mean, it's fine. If they kept using it, it would be fine. But I definitely think like the iconography of Godzilla is different from that. Um, I don't... Minds the idea of again kind of rebooting after Heisei. Heisei had a pretty clear and satisfying finale to it. So, as far as it goes, I didn't mind that. Uh, I just thought like the human plot was pretty boring and the Godzilla plot was fairly lackluster. Like, it felt pretty paint by numbers. There wasn't anything particularly deep about it. It was just like new Godzilla design. And as we'll talk about later, there's other Millennium reboots that try to go in different directions with the character, where this one kind of just stays firm. It's like, it could easily have just been a random film in the middle of the Heisei era, but it doesn't really stand up as a strong reboot. It kind of has a lot of the same pitfalls of like Godzilla 1984, where yeah, I see bit. what they were going for, but especially since they didn't continue with this continuity, <laughs> yeah, it, it kind of just falls flat for me. So, after that is Godzilla vs. Megacurious. Uh, 
so yes, Godzilla vs. Megagirius is a deviation of the original timeline where Godzilla doesn't die at the end of 1954 and everyone just moves on with their lives. Our city was transformed into a sea of fire. Less than 10 years after the end of the war and in the middle of the post-war economic miracle, Tokyo was once again the scene of death and mass destruction. Um, <laughs> Tokyo, they just leave Tokyo to get decimated by Godzilla every couple of years and move the capital of Japan to Osaka. And they're like, we're sick of nuclear energy. Instead, we're going to go through interdimensional wormholes to get energy. And this wakes up a bunch of fucking little bugs, interdimensional bugs, yes. including the big one, the Megagirius. The Godzilla, the, the Godzilla 2000 design returns, but it's not the same Godzilla. It is the original Godzilla, and they CGI him into some clips from the old movie. It's wacky. Um, <laughs> and um, Godzilla fights Megagirius. That's kind of just like the whole movie. Just a lot of fighting the bug. So Connor, what'd you think of Godzilla vs. Mega Gearies? Honestly, there was no reason this should have been another reboot. Uh, the Godzilla 2000 design is maintained and there's no good reason this wasn't just a sequel to Godzilla 2000. Um, I guess I don't really mind the continuity contradiction so much. In a lot of ways, if you look over the fact that this is supposed to be Godzilla 1 and not Godzilla 2, it pretty much just is a sequel to Godzilla 2000, because they kind of just mention that, and then it's not that important to the plot. No, it has no relevance. It has no relevance. They just rebooted Godzilla again. Yeah, I mean, again, the human plot completely fucking escapes me right now. And we There's just some photographers, movie. and they're taking pictures. Yeah. They're in a van. No, that's the then... 2000. Oh. Godzilla 2000 had the girl in the van. Oh, this one's the one about the interdimensional soldier people who get killed by the bugs, and then oh. they, like, fly the plane around. And there's the little boy who found the bugs. They fly the plane around while Godzilla fights the bug yeah. army. Okay. Got so, Tokyo, Osaka gets flooded. My point is, the human plot isn't very memorable. There's not much to it. Not at all. Um, it's fine. It honestly feels like... Godzilla fights Black Mothra, who's evil. Yep. It's the same style of fights and stuff. And a lot of the times when Godzilla fly, fights these flying enemies, it's just not that entertaining. So, I mean, this one had its moments. I don't think it's necessarily as weak as Godzilla 2000. But, I mean, Godzilla 2000 kind of got elevated by the cool fight with Orca, if nothing else, despite the rest of the plot being pretty shit. So, there was that. So, honestly... Meh, I didn't really care for this one. So Aiden, what did you think of Megagirius? Yeah, I don't really get Megagirius. Um, there's nothing all that cool in it. The human plot is mind-numbing. Um, Megagirius has a cool design, but the fight isn't that cool because it's kind of just like Godzilla shoots lasers at the flying thing. Again, flying bug. Um, so yeah, Megagirius, forgettable, is my conclusion. Yes. The next one is Godzilla, Mothra, and King Ghidorah, All Monsters Attack, I believe. That's I the believe. subtitle. So this movie is a weird one, and so basically, in this one, Godzilla died in the 1950s, uh, so the original Godzilla is canon again, everything else is not canon. Godzilla is revived by the spirits of dead Japanese soldiers to haunt the world. Hey, look! I think they fell overboard! And then Mothra, and Gyrius, and King Ghidorah are the three guardian monsters tasked with destroying Godzilla to save the Earth from destruction. And there's slasher elements in this. 
There is a news reporter who tries to chase people, who tries to chase Godzilla. Her father, who flies an airplane. Her, there's ghosts. There's ghouls. <laughs> Godzilla's a fucking slasher villain and the first like half of this movie is basically Jaws. <laughs> so Aiden, what did you think of uh, Godzilla Mecha um, Godzilla King Ghidorah Mothra all out monsters giant monsters attack? Um GMK is cool because it's so different. It's really yes. weird and janky. Um this is the most evilest Godzilla that we will ever get. Come on! Ah! My God, it's Godzilla. Where normally Godzilla is either a force of nature who just kind of like stomps on things randomly, or he's a superhero. In this movie, he's just like downright malicious. Like he sees some girl in the hospital, and walks past her to trick her to think she's safe. And then he swings his tail back and crushes her to death for no reason. Yeah. And he just like goes out of his way to step on people. And he's controlled by Japanese ghosts. It's fucking insanity. Um, <laughs> it's um, all the fights are really fun. You get to see, um, you know, all the characters, are the, all the monsters are the good guys against the supremely evil Godzilla. Um, King Ghidorah is a good guy for once. That was an interesting change. Yeah. Because King Ghidorah is usually like the ultimate supervillain of the Godzilla franchise. Yeah, he's like the biggest rival, so I guess... Or at least the ones like the evil aliens use to be evil. But yeah. in this one, he's just nonsensically the ultimate guardian of Earth. Yeah, um, King Ghidorah has a really cool design in this one. I think all the monsters have good designs in this one. Baragon gets some time to shine, even though Baragon had just been like completely non-factor in these movies and appeared like one time in the fucking All Monsters Attack or one of those fucking ones. Um, <laughs> Godzilla just decimates Baragon. Um, you know, it's a very strange movie. The first half hour is Godzilla and his ghost buddies killing people. He's just a slasher, he walks around stomping on people for no reason. Uh, the big reveal at the end of the movie is that they blow up Godzilla while he blows himself up because they like poke a hole in his neck and he shoots lasers into himself on accident. Credits roll, it goes underwater and shows his heart still beating, yeah, just his heart. It reminds me of like Jason Goes to Hell, where. <laughs> yeah, Jason, exactly. Well, in that movie, Jason doesn't actually go to hell, but Freddy's glove pops up and like pulls it down. Yeah. Kind of gave me that vibe, or like, you know, the old like, you think he's dead and then he's like at the bottom of the pit and opens his eyes or some shit. It's a real yeah. slasher trope. Very slasher. This whole it's movie is very really, much American slasher influenced. It's an American slasher where giant monsters beat the shit out of each other. Um, the plot with the reporter lady, not that bad. It's whatever, I mean, it, it basically just boils down to like, she watches the fights. <laughs> well, the father's fucking badass. The father is a badass. It but flies her, through Godzilla. Her and her boyfriend just kind of like 
Just staying around watching shit while her dad flies giant drills through Godzilla's throat. Yeah. Um, all the all the monster designs really good. Uh, they gave Godzilla a new design where his eyes are like glassy white and he's yes. all like decrepit because he's a corpse zombie. Jason Voorhees Godzilla. <laughs> Uh, GMK, pretty cool. Weird, um, probably not that good, but very unique. Connor, what do you think of GMK? Yeah, I mean, totally it's very much a slasher film. Uh, the reporter kind of feels like your standard Godzilla protagonist, and so does the father. You know, they're the archetypes of the everyman character, as well as, like, military person, military special forces guy. Uh, but, I mean, a lot of the characters surrounding the film are, like, slasher characters. Like, there's one point where a group of kids are on the beach, and they're like, let's go <laughs> swimming out here. And then, like, the canoe gets pulled underwater, and it's like, you can very much see this American slasher influence with this very weird Japanese spin. S film. <laughs> yeah, spin. Uh, so that's bizarre, but it was kind of cool. Like... Tonally, it's so different from everything else in the franchise, and that's one thing I do like about the Millennium Era. I mean, do I think shit. it's overall, do I think overall, I mean, we'll get back to this, but with the Millennium Era, given that it's constant reboots and constant kind of just giving control to the filmmaker and saying, like, you know, sure, make GMK, because it won't matter, we're going to reboot the next movie anyhow. It allowed a lot of creative liberties with with how they took the franchise. And rather than having our Godzilla be a superhero, like, you know, in the show era, he never really hits the superhero status in Heisei. He's kind of an anti-villain. And here he's a little more villainous in the, throughout the Millennium Era. But, I mean, for the most part, here you have a Godzilla that's just downright a fucking evil asshole. He's not even, like, the, there's nothing about him that's, like, slightly a good guy. Literally, like Friday the 13th, if Jason was a 70-foot dragon. Exactly. And and that leads to some badass moments. I gotta admit, it's kind of fun. And uh, it's a little weird. King Ghidorah is a good guy. That was a weird choice. That They probably could have picked, like, Rodan or something. I mean, King Ghidorah is always Godzilla's, like, ultimate rival. So I guess if you're making Godzilla pure evil... Yeah, I mean, I guess we could have done like Ingarius, Ro Mothra, and Rodan or something. That's kind of what they did in uh, King of the Monsters. Granted, I haven't seen that movie in a couple of years, but we will get back to that eventually. But yeah, no, honestly, it's a pretty interesting Godzilla movie, and one I would recommend you check out um, in the hierarchy of Godzilla films. It's very unique. <laughs> Unique. So next up it is Godzilla against Mechagodzilla. Which once again reboots us to the only thing being canon is 1954. In this one, humans build Mechagodzilla um, to fight off Godzilla. And for some reason, they decide that Mechagodzilla absolutely needs the skeleton of the original Godzilla inside of it. Serizawa was afraid of the terrible power he'd unleashed, but he refused to reveal its secret. He took it to the grave with him. Whose ghost takes over and starts fucking shit up. The human plot is the pilots of Mechagodzilla try to not die. So Connor, what do you think about Godzilla against Mechagodzilla? Uh, you know, I thought it was uh, pretty solid. Uh, I usually think the Mechagodzilla movies are just kind of fun because Mechagodzilla is a cool mech character. So whenever I see him, it's generally a pretty good time. Uh, and this is no exception to that. I thought it was weird that they CGI'd in, like, so they were showing stock footage of the original movie. 
they really just like to CGI shit into the original movie in the Millennium Era. Because this time they like CGI'd like an extra part of Godzilla dissolving and it just looks like shit. Like they probably could have yeah. just used the original dissolve. And he's like standing up and flailing his arm around and he's like 2002 CGI. skeletons flies at the camera. Yes. Uh, why they needed his skeleton for Mechagodzilla? That's an amazing question. Really, is a dead animal skeleton gonna be more e effective, like, structure? Like, I would almost get, like, if they, like, somehow were, like, we need to match the body proportions of Godzilla, so we research the skeleton. But the fact that they built Mechagodzilla around the skeleton baffles and confuses me. But whatever, the fact you that know, Godzilla has a soul that can possess robots. Yes, dead Godzilla, because the ancient spirits or some bullshit desecrated the corpse of Mac Godzilla so he could take over. That's the idea. Yep. The spirits are angry, uh, so the spirit of Godzilla possesses Mac Godzilla like a fucking ghost. Yeah. Uh, and then ultimately they still just like get Mechagodzilla going and they shoot Godzilla until he flees back into the water. Well for a and while like it's Godzilla, like, Godzilla vs. Godzilla. And then they get control back and becomes Godzilla vs. Yeah. Which I mean it's kind of a cool concept. I think they really like to kind of do that thing where it's like a monster of Godzilla's design. In a lot of ways. Like you got that with Biolante to an extent. You got that with Orga to an extent. Yep. You got that with Mecha Godzilla. Space, Space Godzilla, Godzilla is made out of Biolante, which was made out of Godzilla, so it's Godzilla with crystals on his arms. Yep. And I think that adds a level of intensity, I suppose, and kind of makes Godzilla more of a good guy, because it's usually like humans were meddling around, and now there's a new Godzilla. So... It kind of adds to that, and it has the weird, like, spiritual theme uh, to Mechagodzilla, which, you know, I guess I kind of see why they did it, and I guess the metaphor is, like, humans sometimes try to play God, and Something like it that, yeah. backfires. I think it, that's kind of supposed to be the message of it. Uh, so it was okay. So Aiden, what did you think of Godzilla against Mechagodzilla? Godzilla against Mechagodzilla is pretty strong. Uh, the fighting, all the fighting stuff in this movie is fantastic. Uh, all the Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla stuff. Even plot's passable, gets things moving along. Characters are moderately more interesting than average. Um, <laughs> Uh, there's not a lot to say. The fight's good. The rest of it, passable. Yeah, Godzilla against Mechagodzilla. Pretty decent. Yeah, speaking of Mechagodzilla, uh, Tokyo SOS. Is the direct sequel to this film, again starring Mechagodzilla. This time pulling Mothra into the fold, essentially Mothra warns one of the mechanic, the mechanics, the mechanics <laughs> on the Mechagodzilla project, who is the grandson of the guy who was in the Mothra original movie, because like every, every yes. monster movie except all of the Godzilla sequels from the yeah, show so era <laughs> they confirm. Canon. They confirm that like, all sorts of weird ones like Space, Space Amoeba, Amoeba and the Mothra trilogy are canon here. Not the trilogy, the original movie. The, I'm pretty sure the whole Mothra trilogy is... The trilogy is from the 90s. Oh, is it? The trilogy from, okay. is from the 90s. The original right. Mothra movie right. is from the 60s. Gotcha. Yep. But yes. Yep. So essentially all, all, all these movies are... Canon, or, shit. It's not necessarily that important, but he's the grandson of Mothra, Mothra's finder guy, discoverer from the original Mothra film. Anyhow, so, he basically has the moral choice of these fairies are like, look, Mothra will fuck your ass up if you guys use Mechagodzilla, 
the Mechagodzilla planning committee is like, is all this true? Then he has to decide between whether or not he wants to trust Mothra to fight Mechagodzilla or, or Godzilla or use Mechagodzilla. And he chooses to use Mechagodzilla, which angers Godzilla's spirit. So they fight. But then Mothra gets his ass kicked, so maybe it was a good idea to use Mepe Mega Godzilla. But then they all fight, and then uh, Mega Godzilla regains control. Godzilla's bones <laughs> control Mega Godzilla, and he flies Godzilla into the ocean. Yes, and as he's flying Godzilla into the ocean, the computer screen says, Thanks for being my friend, pilot. It's really weird. Yes, it's very Japanese. So, Aiden, what did you think of <laughs> Tokyo SOS? Well, Tokyo SOS is the one we grew up with. This is yes. the first one we had. The only well, one actually, that's time. not true. We had a pirated copy of the Matthew Broderick movie. Yeah. And that inspired but, us to annoy our parents into getting Tokyo SOS. Tokyo SOS. And then well, soon after, we got Biolong Tan VHS. But Regardless, um, Tokyo SOS. It's a weird movie. Weird movie. <laughs> a lot of this is the old guy from Mothra and his grandson, like fucking kicking rocks and wandering around and making, making shapes, shapes out of desks. They call Mothra summon him. Uh, Mecha Godzilla is much less endearing in this movie. Uh, there's still some good fights. Um, Mecha Godzilla and Mothra team up. Mothra even gets some badass moments, which is pretty rare for her. When she fucking just blows herself up, the larva come back. Um, there's a lot going on. The ending is bizarre. <laughs> the you know, it's it's weird. I, I don't really know what to think of Tokyo SOS. It's interesting that this is the one they chose to have continuity with the previous movie. Um, even Mechagodzilla wrapped itself up for the most part, but, um... Yeah, it was pretty needlessly. You know, it's okay. The fights are good, once again. Human plot's a little less endearing this time. Uh, functional. Passable. Connor, what'd you think of Tokyo SOS? I thought Tokyo SOS was... I mean, I don't really have much expanded thoughts compared to against Mecha Godzilla. I mean, like you said, I think Mothra was a cool addition, and this is probably one of the only films that Mothra was genuinely pretty good in. The singing twins weren't too uh, invasive to the plot. They can sometimes be a little obnoxious. Um, once the human plot got going, I actually thought it was one of the better human plots. I kind of liked the main character. Uh, Grandpa, the little kid, was a little weird, but I guess what do I expect from these movies? Especially the ones that lean into the more campy tone of the Godzilla lore, like this one does, kind of. Uh, but honestly, like, you know... It has cool fight scenes. The human plot's okay. It's it's a it's a decent Mecha Godzilla Godzilla adventure. It's pretty decent. I don't have much more to say. The final film of the Millennium Era is Godzilla Final Wars. The first 30 minutes, there's a bunch of monsters, um, a bunch of really obscure ones, like the fucking Mantis guy. Well, you're getting ahead of yourself here, because they froze Godzilla in the Arctic. Right, okay, so the very first scene, uh, there's this guy who used to be an MMA fighter who turned into a Japanese WWE star, who stars in this movie as Mike Hagar from Final Fight. Now! Service. 
and he's a military general, and they freeze Godzilla, and they're going around killing monsters. Like, immediately after this, they go and just kill Ghidorah. And Ghidorah is just like a snake in this well, one. Well, you gotta mention the first who they are. Ex explain the theys. Yes, um, so there's a bunch of monsters running around, and Gyrius is there. They pick some obscure ones. There's uh, Kumonga, the spider thing. There's it's the the praying mantis. There's, there's stock footage of fucking uh, stock footage of or whatever a fucking fuck. ton of characters. <laughs> King Caesar's kicking around a little bit, uh, and of course, Zilla from um, Matthew Broderick, Roland Emmerich, Godzilla, is there. But you've got to explain the organization that Zangief belongs to. Right, so the, um, the G-Force is still in, intact, a new version of the G-Force that's a little more hip and technological, they fly around in a giant drill ship that shoots laser beams, and they kill monsters. But there's also a group called the M-something, M-Force, M- I'm pretty sure it is just the M- M-Unit, something like that, and they're mutants. And these mutants have psychic abilities. They can do front flips out of three-story buildings. They shoot guns. They run on walls, and they do slow-motion Matrix stuff because the Matrix was popular. Yes, and our main main character is one of these mutants, but he's a nice mutant, who's too nice for his own good. So the aliens show up, the Zillions, who were in... in Invasion of the Astro Monster? Invasion of the Astro Monster, new versions. And the, the Zillions in this movie, instead of being weirdos in like, black sock, bodysuit, silver things, are punk rock, my Chemical Romance, boy band, Japanese men with lots of eyeliner. ...to the entire universe, and yet you side with cows! Yeah! Yeah! Dressed in more leather than fucking dominatrixes. Yes, dressed in full body leather get-ups. They go around and they kidnap all the monsters in the world, brain control them, and then put them back to start fucking things up, even though that's what they were already doing. Oh, f for a while they pretend to be good guys to the humans, and then they're right. Like, they also snatch up all the world leaders and they, put them on their ship without killing them, and replace them with androids. Because it's worth noting the Zillions are also Terminators. Yeah, some of the Zillions are cyborg Terminators who also wear. No, I think they all are leather. The main guy isn't. No, because the main guy, guy, he said, show your real face, and then the main guy's like, heh, I think I like looking like this, because they didn't want to animate the Terminator. But the mutants... No, I think... But the mutants are also... So, the aliens are Terminators, and Gigan is part of the alien DNA, and then the mutants have Gigan's DNA. No. But for some reason, the mutants aren't Terminators, but the main villain is a Terminator, but said he likes the face, so he won't take it off. No, I think he's an alien in disguise, because he's a psychic. None of the well, other robots the alien are psychics. A Terminator? None because of the, he none said of the he doesn't want to show his true identity. Yeah, but that's because he's an alien. No, 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 no. He wasn't making robot noises, oh. he was a psychic. So wait, are the I Terminators just what they replace most the people with? 
there's a lot of Terminators. There's like 500. So of them. all the black know. trench coat people aren't Terminators. They're aliens, maybe. A Something. lot of them are Terminators. The main villain is not a Terminator. But he's in a different. Some disguise. other characters m might be Terminators. Anyway, we're getting off topic. Jeez. So the the mutants are all like interbred with the aliens who've been around for a fucking while. Just kicking rocks. The fucking they they're like okay guys, a media a planet is gonna crash into the earth and the only way to stop it is if everyone takes their guns and stands in one spot and shoots at it. There is only one way to stop the two planets from colliding. You must concentrate all your firepower on one point to intercept Gorth. We've calculated the exact time and position. And so all of humanity is defenseless while all the monsters come back and start running around and the G-Force mutant guys are doing backflips and killing the lobster Ibira who's just like blowing up Saudi Arabian oil fields for some reason. Godzilla, they unfreeze Godzilla because they're like, shit's fucked. And they lead Godzilla around who one-shots all the monsters. Well, it, okay, it's also worth noting, here's another little note. There wasn't really a planet flying because they looked at the microscope and found out that it was just a hologram. Yes. Yeah, that was hol bullshit. They did a hologram planet. So, Godzilla goes around me, fucking one-shots all the monsters. Uh, the little mini-fights are kind of funny. He grabs the spider kaiju Kamanga by his web and spins him around and Super Mario throws him into the fucking space. <laughs> he kicks Angurius around like a soccer ball to kill King Caesar. Uh, he just blast Zilla to pieces because they found out they had the rights to use Zilla and just wanted to kill him for laughs. Um, so yeah, Godzilla cleans up and then a rock lands and it has Monster X in it who's actually Kaiser Ghidorah. <laughs> Godzilla and Kaiser Ghidorah start fighting and then that's completely pushed aside for like 30 straight minutes where Mike Hagar and the psychic guy and the girl some other people go up to the alien spaceship and there's a big karate Dragon Ball Z fight between the main character and the main villain. Yeah, because the main character and the main villain happen to be the two only people who can go yes. Super Saiyan. They're the Kaiser psychics who can go Super Saiyan. Hagar runs around with a katana, killing robots. The Godzilla stuff is just like completely forgotten. It feels like this was a movie that a psycho wanted to make, and then he went to Toho, and they're like, "You need to put Godzilla in this." So he's like, "Okay, I'll put Godzilla in it," and filmed like ten also minutes of Godzilla. Put every fucking other monster. That's completely unrelated to Godzilla in any way. Like the whole plot of this movie does not tie into the Godzilla thing until the last minute. Really, it's the Japanese Matrix. It's the Japanese Matrix. So then we go back to the Godzilla stuff. Um, they revive Gigan, but they give him dual chainsaw, chainsaw hands, so each hand has two chainsaws on it. And then Mothra shows up for no reason and starts fighting Gigan while Godzilla fights Kaiser Ghidorah, who has kind of a bad design. He's like all black and splotchy. Yeah. Uh, and they fight, and they fight. And they fight. Mothra and Gigan die. Kaiser Ghidorah is about to kill Godzilla, but the Super Saiyan good guy realizes he can shoot his laser through the ship to give Godzilla unlimited power, and then Godzilla goes Super Saiyan. Oh, I forgot. At one point, some some of the this old guy and this little kid find Manila, Godzilla's son, 
Yeah, I thought you were almost gonna miss that. I was, I was gonna make friends with Manila. I don't like the look of this. Uh, uh, quick, Kinder, uh, let's go. And uh, we better take what's his name with us. Manila. And then Manila grows, and then the whole Manila thing comes in like the middle of the movie, and it's completely forgotten until the end. So Godzilla kills Kaiser Ghidorah. I would say the Manila subplot is 100% totally fucking pointless. No, it's not, because it's important in the end. When, at the end, Godzilla defeats Kaiser Ghidorah, and he sees the humans, and he's like, I'm gonna kill these guys. And Manila is like, Dad, no. And then there's the little kid that was friends with Manila, and the soldiers are gonna shoot Godzilla, and the little kid says, Soldiers, no. And then everyone goes home. Yep. So what'd you think of Godzilla Final Wars? Uh, <laughs> I mean... It's a lot, man. Watching it, you're like, wow. Uh, the opening title credits, that was pretty epic. Yeah, the trance uh, remix of the Godzilla theme. Yep. Well, also just like what they put together for that. Uh, I think Seizure. worth note is the scene where uh, they're in New York and there's like a 10 minute scene of this pimp and a cop talking and pointing guns at each other and like laughing about bug eyed black homeless man. Yeah, uh, that was weird. Hands off! Yo, you listen and you read the sign. Come on, man, all the talking for five minutes. Five minutes, five seconds, doesn't freaking matter because I'm going to bust you up. I'm looking at a dead man. I'm looking at a dead man. Yo, what's up? Uh, come on, put the gun down. No, no, see, too late for that. Just here, in a hand cannon. I'll blow your ass all the way back to Jersey. The movie moves at a billion miles per hour and nothing makes any fucking sense. I mean, you got... I mean, there's just so much shit going on. This movie's a combination of The Matrix, Godzilla, Power Rangers, Star Wars, X -Men. the X Men, Dragon Ball Z, Final Fight. Uh, well, I think the Final <laughs> Fight is kind of just coincidental. Just the one character. Yeah. But I mean, like the final ship thing, it basically is structured like a Star Wars scene. Yep. The mutants are basically Matrix characters. That final fight between the two literally Dragon mutant Ball. and the alien is literally Dragon Ball. You got every fucking monster in existence, and when the mutant force works together at first, it literally looks like something out of a Power Rangers show. Uh, you got just the most bombastic editing, the worst color grading I've oh seen my in God, a film. So fucking bad. I was saying. There's one scene, and I was I made a video about Transformers 2007, like a year ago, and I say Michael Bay infamously makes all of his movies at this period in time look piss yellow. There was a scene, <laughs> and that was kind of a joke, because I'm just saying, like, yellow color gray generally looks like shit. There is a scene in this movie that literally looks like somebody yeah. urinated on the camera. It is pissed fucking yellow. Yeah. And then all of the stock footage gets color corrected. Uh, yeah. And it's not like, like fucking Zack Snyder or somebody who picks an ugly filter and kind of at least sticks with the palette throughout. No, there is no every, palette every to this scene. Every scene has its own fucking. Every scene, it'll be like color. one scene's yellow. There was, there was a scene where they, like, went to hell, but they were still tinged yellow for some reason, because I think, like, they were on the green screen, and they probably had, like, lights that were shining on them yellow or something. So then they go into hell, or the black void or something, and they're still yellow. I, I don't even know what to fucking say. There's so much fucking shit going on. It's not a Godzilla movie. Uh, it's bombastic. It, the CGI is fucking terrible. There's just so much that I could talk about. But honestly, 
if I can boil down my thoughts, it's one of the worst movies I've ever seen, but it is like, it's definitely some premium so bad it's good material, because I'm laughing, I'm crying, I'm scratching my head, I'm fucking confused, I'm having epilepsy attacks throughout but it's fucking epic. The best way to describe this movie is the sim the most simply epic movie that has ever existed. Nobody could possibly make a fucking epic on this scale, bro. You put together every fucking epic movie, bro, into one, and it wishes it could be as epic as Godzilla Final Wars. Because yeah. it's just so ungodly fucking epic. Like, honestly, it's the the creator went out and said, I want to make an epic movie that's just a combination of every fucking movie and has every Godzilla monster and it's like the Matrix, but even more epic. And that's what he did. So Aiden, what did you think of Godzilla Final Wars? Godzilla Final Wars was made by an insane person. It's the only logical explanation. The movie makes no sense. Oh yeah. The plot is a disaster. The pacing nonsense. There's a solid 40 minutes at the start of the movie where it's just like random monsters blowing shit up with no explanation. We have no fucking clue what's going on. Once the aliens show up, the plot makes a little more sense. But then it U-turns around and becomes fucking space dragon ball. Godzilla stopped being in the movie for fucking solid half hour there. It's fucking insanity. The director should be in a fucking hospital somewhere. The fucking everyone who worked on this should be jailed. It's one of the worst movies I've ever seen in my life. It is honestly horrible. It looks horrible. It looks incredibly horrible. There are so many bizarre choices. At one point, when Godzilla's fighting Zilla, it just starts playing heavy metal for that one scene. Oh, yeah. And then he kills Zilla, and it just changes back. It's, the plot is a nightmare. Everything about it, all the costumes, Asian Gerard Way versus Asian Super Saiyan. The fight is just the most batshit thing. Everything that goes on is horrible, awkward, weird, insane bad, and it's all very entertaining. The movie never stops. There's like, maybe three exposition scenes in the whole movie and the rest is just incredibly insane fucking things happening. This movie feels like doing a lot of blow or fucking smoking crack. Yeah, this, mo this movie feels like being handicapped. Yeah. Actually, that's probably a better fucking description. Okay, I imagine this is what the Downs feels like. Um, <laughs> you think it's that epic? It's horrible in the most epic way possible. It is... It's literally the most epic film humanly possible. It is incredibly... And I'm not even saying that like as a joke. It is literally just so epic. It's And that doesn't make it a good thing. But it's just, it's just incredibly epic. It's hilarious and awkward and weird. Uh, it's very fun. The action and everything, all the insanity is completely non-stop. It's thoroughly enjoyable because it's thoroughly fucking awful. Uh, so yeah, I kind of love it. Yeah, it's like the most terrible thing I've ever seen. But it's incredibly enjoyably terrible. I don't even know what to say. Uh, that about sums it up. Yeah, so that was the Millennium Era of Godzilla. Um, next, we're kind of in a pickle, because the, the Rewa, Re, Rewa, Re, Rewa era, and the, and the uh, legendary films kind of coincided, but we think we're going to do legendary first, because Godzilla 2014 came out before Shin Godzilla. So, next time we'll be looking at the four legendary 
the Monsterverse. Monsterverse films. So, ooh, get prepared for that. Thank <laughs> you.